pretty simple. Uh, trying to get gin into beef or into fish or into chicken was quite the challenge for me because you know I don't naturally cook with a lot of alcohol. Yes, wine. Yes, beer. But now trying to introduce a harder liquor to my food was kind of the challenge. So I had to sit down. I had to think about it. And, you know, make sure that the check cleared, and then I went right to it. So what I have is beautiful beef tenderloin. And how many people don't like beef tenderloin? If you don't, get out now. But if you do, if you do, not a problem. Um, does anyone want to come up here and help me out a bit? Anyone? Fred. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't be right. like that. Don't all be like right, that. Don't you, baby. So who wants my meat? I'm going okay. to I'm gonna make sure that you don't Here, have to touch anything. Okay. So you hold that bag. Okay. And you, you take that, that Tom, that, okay. and you take your side over Because it's going okay? to okay. phase out soon. Right, so yeah. 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 oh, oh, hang on a second. We did this this morning. Three, two, one, bam. All right. All right, good. Now that face smile's over with. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, so you put your beef tenderloin okay. in. I'm going to put a little bit of garlic and olive oil over top. But let's now get some lemon, or sorry, orange zest in there. Let's get some chilies in there. Because I'm going to play around. You're going to get a marinade. I'm going to get a quick little pat dry rub on there. So yours is in. Okay. Now we still need just a little bit. This is the Bombay Sapphire. That's, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, we're That's okay. Sure. That's okay. <laughs> and just a little bit of onion on top. So close your bag up and you are done. That's it. Mush it around though. You gotta mush it around. Yeah, there you go. You're mush, massaging mush. it enough? You're massaging okay. it now. Exactly. See? You understand how to deal with okay, it. Stop it now. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little bit of dry rub on mine. Put the chili on top, and we're going to open up that grill, and we're going to get yours on as well. How many of you have actually cooked with uh, gin before? Anyone? Nope. Penny, uh, penny uh, or vodka and gin. All of these can go with tomato sauces really well. So if you haven't cooked with it before, I really want you to start thinking about it in terms of this is something you're going to try at home. Hopefully, hopefully. Now, let's pretend that we have 20 minutes. It's elapsed. It's gone. You need to take yours out. I'll do that for you, though. You, you just open it up. All righty. And what I want to do is I just want to take off most of the marinade. Thank you very much. Let me get rid of this stuff. So we have one that's been marinated quickly. And 20 minutes is the least amount of time that you want to do a marinade. Now, beef tenderloin, because it is what it is, I wouldn't recommend you go over two hours with this. Make sure you put enough olive oil plus your gin, your Bombay Sapphire. Make sure that you don't put in too much gin because what it'll do is it'll start to cook this. And we don't want that. We just want it to infuse that flavor. All right, so what we have going here now is we have a quick dry rub. We have a marinade. Thank you very much. Thank I'm gonna you. thank you so much for helping out. You, you should get a job in television. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob. You're welcome, Mike. Thank you very much. So what I'm doing now at this point, make sure that you always season. And even though this one was marinated, and really technically I just put it in and took it out, let's just put a little bit more over top. Because I want that flavor to sort of adhere. But what I need to do before I get this onto the grill is I gotta let that sit for just a little bit. That moisture will start steaming before it starts to actually sear. So just leave that alone. This one we had as a dry rub. Just gonna put a little bit more chili on there. A little bit more salt. And you just wanna make sure it's liberally seasoned. And then we walk over here. Now. Voila, I have myself a hot, hot grill. I've got myself some charcoal in here. This seems to be my new uh, vested interest is to cook with charcoal, which I really love. I've done a lot of gas cooking, but charcoal is the next level. So, sear, you gotta hear some type of a sear. You gotta leave it alone right now. Now, because we have a lot of wind up here, that's the next thing we have to do, because we wanna keep that heat inside. If we leave the lid up, we drop the temperature anywhere between 35 to 55 degrees. Up to 100 degrees you could drop it if you leave the lid open. So keep it closed. And what we want to do with this one now is that I'm just making sure that I coat it. I want to get a little bit more olive oil on top. And I'm going to get this on. We're going to do a little bit of a taste test. So 
when this comes off the grill, and no matter what recipe we move on to, we're going to come back and we're going to try these out. This did not get a chance to marinate for two hours, but it did get a chance to get just a touch of that gin. Let's open this baby up one more time. And we're going to put this on as well. Now, how many of you do a lot of barbecuing 12 months out of the year here? Well, you can though. In Canada here, not Toronto, just joking. You can cook 12 months out of the year, but see this, guys? That's what we're looking for. Nice sear marks. You should not have to struggle with your meat before you turn it. It should flip automatically. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm just gonna keep turning this until I get all the sides done. Turn the temperature down on one side of your barbecue and just allow it to cook up nice and gently. I like my meat medium rare, which is 125 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. That's what we're looking for. As people who barbecue all the time, Remember, you're put into a different category. If you do fine dining, people love you because you are eating 1% of the food that's cooked on the planet. But barbecue is what? 99% of what people do all over the world. No matter where I've gone, from Singapore to Toronto to here, everybody has some type of a barbecue experience. And I love the fact that I can articulate that. That's basically my job. I'm six feet tall, I speak English, and I'm not ugly. So that means I'm competent enough to show you a little bit about the barbecue. And I don't want to tell anybody about barbecue that already barbecues. What I do is I reiterate, I reiterate and I tell you the things that you already know, but I just try to bolster that. How many of you have actually cooked with gin before on a barbecue? Probably not many of you. But after today, you will give it a shot. At least bring somebody over to your house, mother-in-law, somebody that you don't like as much. <laughs> give it a shot and then we know. So I'm gonna keep going here, guys. The meat is going to roll out, and then we're gonna move into our next recipe. But I'm gonna be watching this the whole time we're out here. Let me just move back over for two seconds. Seriously, it's something that's very, very easily done to put meat on the barbecue and then wander away and actually forget about it. I have a terribly bad habit of doing that when I have barbecues. Gotta keep an eye. It's always good, but see, if you guys, I wish you could come a little bit closer. Actually, you know what? Come over a little bit for me. For me, the barbecue is about showing people what actually goes on in there. Most of us don't get that opportunity. You bring somebody over to your house, you burn the meal, you're phoning pizza, all right? I don't ever want that to happen to you again. Now, when I'm looking at my tender